Hello, I hope everyone's having a wonderful weekend. I know I am. And I can't wait to actually talk about what we're going to be talking about today. Again, we're, we're still in the book Reaching for Wonder. We're on chapter 8 out of 14, I believe. Yep, no, no, chapter 9. Chapter 9 out of 14. So we're getting pretty close. And this one is about the Cypro-Nician woman. And if I butcher that, I'm sorry. I am... Cypro-Nician. I'm going to butcher that probably a million times. Anyways, I'm really excited to talk about this. This one was really interesting, for me at least, because it wasn't a story I had actually read before that today. And when I kind of read it, I kind of see where it was coming from. So I, I was an outside perspective looking in. So we're going to be focusing on Mark, uh, Mark 7, 24 through 30. I'm going to go ahead and read that for you. Before I go, I'm going to go ahead and pray. <coughs> Excuse me. Dearly Father, I want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you that we can come together and just kind of learn about you and learn from your word today. I want you to watch over everybody as we continue to learn about you. In your name we pray, amen. Jesus got up and went away from there to the region of Tyre. And when he had entered a house, he wanted no one to know of it. Yet he could not escape notice. But after hearing of him, a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately came and fell at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Cyphernesian race, and she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he was saying to her, Let the children be satisfied first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered and said to him, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table feed on the children's crumbs. And he said to her, Because of this answer, go, the demon has already been cast out of your daughter. And going back to her home, she found the child lying on the bed, the demon having left. So the reason I found this so interesting was because this woman, one, she was a Gentile. She had no heritage. And to the Jews, they saw them like dogs. In fact, they called them dogs. They, they saw them as bad as a pig. You know, They weren't worthy and they had no reason to even really be here or, or, or even be in the same room as Jesus. And for her, that was hard. She, she had to go to Jesus and be healed. And, I mean, I think about the times where we, we fight with each other in different uh, denominations. How, oh, you're not a real Christian because you're not this denomination or that denomination. Or you don't believe the way I do. So how dare you, right? And for me, it, it just it brings back to this harmony that Jesus doesn't care what denomination we are. What he looks at is our, us that are core and, and this woman that's what he looks at he looks at her faith not who she was not her ethnicity not the color of her hair the color of her eyes or even what denomination she is rather he looked at her as a person you know to her you know we think about the word dog right that's similar to a lot of the derogatory terms we actually use today you know, like someone calling someone gay or uh demeaning someone because of what they look like right it was a very demeaning thing but what was really interesting in this passage, Jesus doesn't actually use the word dog or the derogatory dog form. Instead, he uses the word that means puppy or pet dog. And in, in her culture, they actually had pet dogs. So to her, it was a very different meaning. And Jesus actually used the meaning she was more familiar with and used that to kind of challenge her. Instead of trying to offend her, he wanted to see if she could find the deeper meaning in what he was saying. So the question that is being raised here, will will she be offended and simply walk away? Or rather, will she choose to listen and accept what Jesus is offering her? And as we see, that's what she does. She chooses that. So let's kind of dive deeper into this. So calling me a dog, right? Calling, if you call it, like calling her a dog. And when I thought about this, I thought about sometimes when our prayers aren't answered, right? It could make us feel like, this woman in the passage, like a dog, like we're meaningless. Huh? When we go to God, yet nothing changes. Or we pray and nothing changes. Or we cry out to God and still nothing seems to change. Every time we go to God, it feels like either he's not answering us or he's simply pushing us harder and harder and harder. So what do we do? We get angry, we get mad, we get frustrated with God, and it feels like nothing. We feel we feel so worthless. But God is challenging us to be like this woman. You see, this woman 
had such an interesting response to Jesus' comment. You see, Jesus said, said that, and I like Jesus' comment. He said to her, let the children be satisfied first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. You see, he was, challenge, he was, trying, to, he was trying to incite her in a way to see if she was reading deeper into what he says. And often when we read scripture, that's what Jesus is challenging us to do. He wants us to dive deeper into the passage and find more meaning into it. And then we have more resources than she did at the time. So he wanted to try and associate this word dog with her culture, and he did very well. And her response was very simple. Lord, even the dogs eat the children's crumbs. But think about how powerful that is, right? Think about it this way. Lord, and, and I wrote this. This is kind of my way of hearing it. Lord, even if you're healing of my daughter, even though you're healing my daughter, I will still receive your blessing as well. To her, she knew the value of even the beloved pup in her home. That was a member of her family. So what did she choose to do? She chose to engage Christ. She chose to challenge Christ as well by saying, Christ, I know you're going to heal my daughter and I will accept whatever you have left for me. So what do we do? When Christ challenges us, do we doubt Christ, that, that Christ will heal our prayers? Do we just give up? Or do we dare to go deeper and, and accept Christ's challenge? You see, when Jesus challenged this woman to go deeper, she accepted that challenge. And what's really interesting, contradicts the previous story that we even read. You see, the previous story we read was about a man who was, who was lame, and he, he was having trouble getting to the, the, the water to be healed, the water that was stirred up. And what does he do? He simply makes excuses. Cry, oh, no, no, no. No, I, I can't get there. No, there's nobody's helping me. Please, I just, I just can't get there. I'm sorry. God heals him anyway. What does he do? He goes and says, oh, Jesus healed me. Jesus healed me. He's such a bad man. You see, Christ challenged him. And what did he do? He denied that challenge. He gave up on it. He didn't, he didn't dare to go deeper. Yet, what do we do? You see, when I think about this story, I'm actually reminded of my own dogs. You see, I have this brown one that you're going to see on the screen uh, with the power of video editing. Her name is Mocha. And then I also have Winter. And what I love about them is the fact that they rely on us to feed the shelter and give them water. I love that they reward, they come back and they give me kisses and all that fun stuff. But the thing is, they, they have a reliance on us. But the thing is, before they relied on us, they were scared. When you bring a puppy home, what do they do? They freak out, they pee, they poop, and they, they don't want anything to do with you at first. But then as they, you build a relationship with them and you challenge their suspicions and fears, they begin to open up and trust you. They dare to go deeper in, your, in faith with you. And you see, now I can't even go to my bathroom, outside, leave to go work without at least one of them, if not both of them, following me and crying down at the bottom of the steps, waiting for me to get done. You see, earlier when I was getting ready to prepare, preparing for this, to record this, Winter was in here waiting for me, pouting down at the bottom of the steps. So I had to let her back up here while I was typing notes because she didn't want to be away from me. You see, Christ isn't just calling us for the quick fix that we see with the, the man at the, the stirred waters. Rather, he's calling and challenging us to go deeper. So the question that is being posed today, will you accept that invitation? Will you delight in God's challenge? You see, when, when Jesus challenged her, he was delighted. So, you see, Jesus came to God with everything and he delighted in her faith. And in doing so, the healing of her daughter came. She had faith that whatever Jesus did, it was going to heal her daughter. If, if it was going to heal her daughter or not, whatever his will was, she was willing to answer that, that calling that she had, that challenge that he, he placed in front of her. You see, God is challenging us every day of our lives. From everything that we're dealing with right now, this COVID, right? It has been a challenge constantly for me with motivation to do more and grow in my faith. These past couple weeks, my wife has even posed a question to me. 
with uh, the schools opening up back up, what are we going to do with youth group? It's challenging me every day. What do I do? How do I go deeper? How do I dive deeper? How do I answer God's call it, for my call in ministry to continue to grow the life, not just here on the internet, but with these teenagers in my youth group? When I answer that call, I am able to grow not just spiritually myself, but also in my ministry. But when I reject that, anything that follows is, is the consequence of my rejection, the fall of my ministry, the fall of this, these, these sermons here that I teach. And I love doing this. So I have to be willing to answer that, right? You see, God is the one who invites us to the table with a challenge. The God who says he delights in faithful love. The God who says, don't be afraid, little flock, because your father delights in giving you kingdom, the kingdom. The God who says the Lord delights in an accurate weight. Sometimes the resistance we get from God isn't what we see. Sometimes when he's not listening to our prayer, it isn't that he's not listening. It's rather he's challenging us to go deeper in our faith, challenging us to say, hey, there's so much more here than simply asking for something. There's so much more here. Let me in to your life. So my question for you today, will you accept the invitation? Will you come to the table? You see, I'm going to play a wonderful song for you. It's so powerful, right? It's by Sidewalk Prophets. It's called Come to the Table. And it reminds me of this passage because God is challenging us. Hey, do you want to come to this table? Do you want to accept the burden that I have? Not the burden, I'm sorry. Do you want to accept the gift that I am offering? I am challenging you not to simply sit there, but challenging you to dive deeper into the faith. And how do we do that? Well, when I think about diving deeper now, it's asking those big questions. I had a kid at youth group ask me a couple, not ask me, but ask JR a couple weeks ago. Why did Jesus spit into mud and rub it into somebody's face? Those are the questions that God wants us to ask. Why does God do the things the way he does? And dive deeper into understanding him. We may not find all the answers, but those are the questions that teenagers are posing that I see that we should be posing. We should be wanting to find those answers because when we dive deeper, we find so much more. We find so much more in our love and our relationship with Christ that when we go out, we show that in everything that we say, everything that we do, and, and how we live our life. So my question and my final question for you, you today before you listen to the song, will you accept Christ's challenge and come to the table? Outside looking in, this is where grace begins. We were hungry, we were thirsty, with nothing left to give. Oh, the shape that we were in. And just when all hope seemed lost, love opened the door for. He said, come to the table Come join the sinners who have been redeemed Take your place beside the Savior Sit down and be set free Come to the table And these thieves There's no one unwelcome here And that sin and shame That you brought with you You can leave it at the door 
To the hero and the coward To the prisoner and the soldier To the young and to the older All who hunger, all who thirst All the last and all the first All the paupers and the princess All who fail, you've been forgiven All who dream and all who suffer All who loved and lost another All the chained and all the free All who follow Come to the table